Hi right, guys, hope you can hear me okay. I hope you can see everything really well. This is the old thermostat we're replacing. This is actually a Honeywell as well as that one. I didn't even realize that when I went to buy it. Um, so we're replacing it with another Honeywell, which is actually the smart thermostat. All right, like I said, you want to pull this cover off. This one here, um, if you have a Honeywell like this, uh, you just want to press the tab on the top and lean it toward you and pull it off. And check and make sure you have the C wire in there, uh, which, which we do have the C wire, which powers the actual thermostat itself. I know it does light up because it has batteries in it. The batteries are just a backup. If you don't have the C wire, you have to install that adapter. And as far as I can tell from the directions, it goes like near the furnace. And our furnace is underneath the floor. I'm not doing all that. So uh, luckily we do have that C wire. So we're going to undo these two screws holding this on. Undo these little teeny tiny flat, flat tip screws and pull this off the wall so that way we can get to the wires and we'll put the base plate for that one on so so with your small tip screwdriver you want to undo the little set screws you want to take a picture take a picture of what those wires are in currently so you'll know where to put them when you put the other thing on don't buy cheap screwdrivers better screwdriver now now we're going to take the screw the two screws holding it out that hold it to the wall Right now, we'll take the I'm just taking those screws out. Now, those you see, all the wires are very loose, so you'll need to get a pair of needle nose now. Get a pair of needle nose here. You just want to pull those wires out. And I couldn't actually find the breaker for this thing, so there's still power on it. And this red one here is actually has a jumper in it. It's jumped from R to the RC, and that has to be put back in the other one. So, <clears throat> so now pull the rest of these out here: pink one, yellow, and a green. Just pull it over the top of those. And there's all your wires you need for to put your other plate on there and i don't think it's going to cover these holes so all right now i found the circuit breaker for the for the heat pump put these wires in this like that there we go now i'm just taking kind of line this up on the wall we're going to take one of the screws from the new one and mark it for the hole shoot right there right there and right there drill a bit here and make our, arc, our anchor then there we go you got three holes. And you got your three anchors there. There's one. There's two. And number three. Now we'll get our our mounting bracket. Alright, so now. Sorry if the lighting's not the best. Take the slide all your wires back through your bracket. Just kind of wiggle around a little bit. You take all your screws. You just screw it to the wall. You don't want to tighten them up yet. Just get all of them started and then, and then tighten them up once you get them all in there. All right, and kind of get where you want it, and then just snug them up. Ain't got to be stupid tight or anything, just just snug. Now here's where we'll start putting all of our wires back in. Now if you'll remember, the other one had a little jumper from R to RC. We'll go get that real quick. This is where that picture comes in handy, so we can look and see what everything was in. Photo here. All right, see, now you got, as you go back to our picture, we got the R and RC jumped together. So we're going to stick this in there, if it'll go in there. And this one here, the little points are kind of wide, so I'm going to have to squeeze them together a little bit on this one here. I know it's hard to see that. This thing is so small. I'm going to squeeze those little points together so it'll fit, so it'll fit into those holes. All right, now we'll just go through and stick the wires in. That one was a red wire. I'm going to stick this phone out. We're just going to do one wire at a time, I guess. All right, this red one's going to go in that slot. C wire is going to go into the C slot, which is right there. Push this little tab down and just shove it in like that until it stops. Kind of push it down out of the way there. And next, we got those other four. This one goes into, pink one goes into a W. All right, so this black one doesn't do anything. In, in, in my case, this black one doesn't do anything, so we're going to kind of bend it up here out of the way for a second. All right, so a white one goes into the W2 slot. The white one does. So I'm taking put it in that slot. And then the green one's going to go into G. It's actually over here behind it. So I'm going to turn that around like that. Spin it around and stick it into that slot. Uh, the yellow one, on my case, is going to go into Y, which is a yellow. This one's going to go down here. Right, so this yellow one here is going to come turn around. And it's going to go into that slot right there. Pink looking wire is going to go into W. You just want to kind of make sure they're not touching each other or anything like that. Black wire, we're just going to bend it down and kind of tuck it in so we don't worry about it touching anything. We're just going to, this one here actually got a cover that covers all the wires connections. Actually, we got to push them in there. 
Let's see, we gotta push them down a little bit. They're not, not wanting to close the door. Push that one down a little bit, and push that one down a little bit, and that blue one, and that one, and then that one. There we go. And we got that one jumped. The RC like it's supposed to. Got that wire hooked up, got that wire pushed all the way in. You see all the tabs are pushed down. I guess an instruction said that means that they're all the way in there. So we just got the little door to cover it with. And it should be easily closed so it's flat and flush. If you have to force it closed, you want to open it back up and make sure you don't have any wires just protruding from the mounting bracket there. Alright, now we'll get our we got our top piece. Well, actually, we're gonna turn the power back on first, and then we'll uh, we'll put the faceplate on. All right, now we have the power back on. Now close this, and then we're gonna set our faceplate on here and see what happens. I'm going through this first time with you guys. That's good. We have power at least. All right, we'll go through the first time setup with you here. We're gonna go through the first setup here with you guys, so anybody who buys it can go through it with me. So. Let's see, it says welcome, get to know your thermostat, get started, um, English, hit next. What type of room will this thermostat be installed in? Let's say other, it's in a hallway. Right here you get to choose your Fahrenheit or Celsius. I'm going to go with Fahrenheit because we're in the States. Did I, it's going to ask you if you installed the C-wire adapter. No, I didn't, because I didn't have to. Mine had the C-wire. It's going to ask you what type of heating system you have forced air or radiant boiler uh, we have forced air what powers your heating system um, ours is going to be electric you can choose gas electric oil or hot water fan coil uh, we're going to go with electric next accessible there we go it's ready to control your system hit next here's where you add any sensors you can purchase optional sensors with this thing i think it, you can add up to i think you can add up to like 20 <laughs> We're gonna set that up later. All right, here's where you can get your Wi-Fi. It can receive your weather information and gives you remote control of your system when you're not here. Sorry, the screen looks like that. It's just from being on a little, that's way the display shows up on the on the camera here. All right, we're gonna go get connected. Here's where you'll pull up, it'll pull up your Wi-Fi networks. All right, and after you put your password and everything in, it'll take a second. It takes, a, it'll have to connect to your router and all that good stuff. I'm pretty sure it'll be an update. Take a second for it to do its thing. There we go. Successfully connected to your Wi-Fi. Just click OK. Oh, we got, there is an app. Okay. Let me download the app real quick. The app will be Honeywell Home. It will look like this. It'll have the little Honeywell Home logo there at the top. This is. Uh, iOS, I'm pretty sure Android look the same. Let's see, I'll show you the app when it comes up here. All right, I'm gonna click open, access your home data. Okay, create account. You're gonna have to put all your information in. Once you get your account all set up and everything, it's gonna ask you which thermostat you purchased. So we got the T9. You can, uh, you can add several different homes apparently. I only have one, so it's going to be home. Creating new home. It's looking for my thermostat. I had to click the... I'm just waiting on this on the thermostat itself, too, so... There we go. I found my hallway thermostat. Would you like to add this device? Yes. You register it. It takes a second to do all this stuff. I imagine they're pairing with each other and doing all that good meshing stuff. All right, now it says successful on the thermostat. The phone app says finalizing registration. There we go, success. Hmm. Now this one says T10, so I'm gonna hit next. Geofence is where it'll work. Says it says it'll work when you're home. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess I'll see how to do that. I guess. What should the temperature be when someone is home? Let's try 70. Let's try 71. And the air conditioning to 71. Set both to 71. Hit next. It's gonna ask you what the temperature should be when when everyone is away. Let's change the cooling to 74. Let's try that. It's a uh, temperature be at night. Uh, we usually like 70, 71 degrees, 72. You can add other stuff if you want to. Cancel. This is just going over the app, how you control it. And it's going to tell you the weather outside, the high and the low and everything. So that's good. There we go. Let's see. Browse status. All right. So now let's turn it to mode. Turn it on heat. Currently 74 degrees in here. If I can get it to come on. Hey, the heat came on. That's good. We're going to turn it back to 71. You can see how responsible that was, how responsive that was. Like, as soon as I adjusted it here, it adjusted it over there. So, that's nice. You can turn your fan on. You can put circulate. Since we have the fireplace, too, we can put circulate on. And you get on, it runs continuously. There we go. I still have to do a little bit of playing with it. 
All right, guys, and that's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys liked the video. Sorry I wasn't too, that knowledgeable about this installation because this is the first time I've done one. So I was just wanting to share with you my experience on how I did this. Just upgrading to a smart thermostat from the other one. Hopefully this will be a lot better. We can actually, like I said, we control it from our phone and everything. So we can kind of monitor it, see what it is when we're not here. Um, plus it'll do like a, that learning feature. So to learn when, when it needs to run and when it doesn't need to run. See what I'm saying? So now that we have the fireplace, the fireplace can, can alleviate some of that running, this thing running all the freaking time. And it can kind of work together. So um, like I said, right now we have just that fireplace going. It's 73 degrees in here. And it's not even on. This is it's already off to a good start. I have to. It does, like I said, it does have sensors you can put. It's supposed to come with one, but I guess that was back when it was first came out. It came with a one one little sensor, but they're only like thirty bucks a piece. Uh, you can put one in your kids' rooms, stuff like that, to kind of it'll kind of help you regulate the temperature, so they don't get too cold at night or too hot during the summertime at night, stuff like that. Um, if I had to get any sensors, it would be uh, one for the kiddos' rooms and maybe one for our room, so we need probably two or three, so. But, so it'll be down the road. Like I said, the app is pretty, the interface is pretty usable, friendly. I mean, it's, you got your temperature on and off, and it's pretty easy to set the temperature, and you can use this when you're not here. So if you need to set it, and if somebody's coming in to your house, and if you have, like, the ability to open the garage door and stuff like we do, while you're away, you can. Um, and way you can set the temperature for, say, if you have somebody coming to clean your house or something like that. Alright guys, I that's going to do it for this video. Uh, this little unboxing and installation of the T9. Or on my app, it said T10. I don't know, maybe they changed the model number of it on me. Get under and hit that like and subscribe button for us. It helps us out. If you have any questions or comments, I will try to answer the best I can. So, just leave them down below there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.